I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. Uh, I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah! That's my king. That's my king.
thank you to Dr. Larry Bradford and our wonderful orchestra for leading us in worship tonight. What a beautiful arrangement of Via Della Rosa that they played for us this evening. So good to welcome you here to Fairview Baptist Church on this, the third and final presentation of Living Pictures 2024. This is our 39th year of presenting the gospel in such a fun, exciting, creative way, and we're thrilled that you're here to participate in that. I want to take care of a few housekeeping matters before we get started. If you would, go ahead and take that telephone out. I know you all have one. Don't act like you don't. I can see all of you. Uh, go ahead and take it out and put it on airplane mode, turn off your Wi-Fi, something. We've got about 25 wireless mics in the program tonight, and these can really interfere with those frequencies. So go ahead and do that for us. That would be great. We'd appreciate that. Also, if you need the facilities, I think you know what I mean when I say that, uh, this evening sometime during the program, you can find those out door number seven back there in the corner and door number two over here. And uh, if you need some help finding those, just see one of our ushers in the red vest. They'll help you uh, get there. We also, as a ministry to you and your family, are providing child care for those children ages three and under. So if your child gets restless during the program, do your neighbors a favor and slip out, okay? And uh, you can watch the program out in the hallways. It's being broadcast on monitors out there. And uh, you can enjoy it out there until your child settles down, or you can go ahead and bring them down to preschool. Our ushers will help you find that. We've got some wonderful adults down there ready to receive your child and uh, keep them occupied while you can slip back in and enjoy the program tonight. There's going to be a lot of action up and down the aisles this evening, so be careful if you have to get up and go out. Just be careful that you don't bump into somebody. You might get a Roman spear. I don't know. You know, things happen in the dark. So uh, just be careful as you're moving about the room tonight. We are so thrilled that you're here to experience the life, the ministry, the miracles, the crucifixion, and the glorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is why we do all of this. We've spent months preparing for you to be here tonight, months getting ready for tonight. And we're thrilled that you're here to enjoy it. We want you to just be captured tonight by the story, by the reality uh, of what Jesus did for you and for me, that we might have life and have it everlasting. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to get started. Lord God, thank you so much for bringing us together tonight that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, thank you for bringing all these kind folks into the room this evening that they too might enjoy the story of Jesus Christ. How much he loved us that he gave himself for us on a cross, but then gloriously three days later rose again. And God, we're going to experience all that tonight. So help us to celebrate, to worship, and to just enjoy being in your presence tonight. Father, your word tells us that where two or three are gathered, there you will be. So we know you're here, and we welcome you here. And tonight is all about you. We pray that you'd be the centerpiece of our worship tonight. In Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you. When did Naomi say that she would be bringing Rebecca by? Any moment now. She is leaving Benjamin and Jeremiah's in Nazareth for a short visit before coming here with Rebecca. It's been a long time since we've seen Rebecca. Village about her schooling, dear. You don't need to worry. It's my granddaughter's first Passover at the, Dru at the temple in Jerusalem. I want everything to be perfect. I have so much to teach her. Nicodemus, do you remember this? Hmm. Yes. Joseph, the carpenter. He crafted this and gave this to me when, when you and I went to visit my family in Nazareth. I remember. He gave it to you at my niece's wedding in Cana. Two years after the festival of the Passover, that's when his young boy, Jesus, came to the temple and sat with the rabbis and the priest. He asked intriguing questions. I was impressed with him even then. He was always so remarkable. Yes, even as a young boy, he had 
Ah, uh, the knowledge of a man who had years of learning in God's Word. I did not understand, but I hope Rebecca will be open to hearing all about Jesus. I'm sure Rebecca will listen. For me, it all began at Hannah's wedding in Cana. What a day that was. Down the mountain, the river flows, and it brings refreshing wherever it goes. Through the valleys and over the fields, the river is rushing and the river is near. The river of God sets our feet a dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. And all who touch it can be revived. And those who linger on this river shore will come back thirsty for more of the love. Let our feet a dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. The river of God. They're out of wine. Is there anything you can do? Woman, my hour has not yet come. Go and do whatever he tells you to do. Draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. It is good. Y'all have saved the best for last. Woohoo! miracle that Hannah's wedding was just the beginning. We had no idea what was to come. There were so many stories, so many different ministries that Jesus did that day. I remember my friend, Ananiah, she was there. She was in the crowd when Jesus raised Jerry's daughter from the dead. Mm. Many of the priests witnessed the healings as well, but they did not believe. I don't understand when it was right there in front of our eyes. Do you remember when... Jesus, something special, supernatural.
woman was so scared, so frightened, I thought they were going to stone her to death right then. But Jesus stepped in front of them, and he challenged them, and he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And slowly, they all began to drop their stones and walk away. I had never seen anybody speak with such authority. But I remember he then knelt down to the lady and said, Go and sin no more. I am guilty, ashamed of what I've done. What I feel, these hands are dirty. I dare not lift them up to the Holy One. You plead my cause.
to have you here, Rebecca, with me. I thought you and your mother would never arrive. She always seems to be running late. I'm excited to be here too, Sabah. Father has told me much about the events at the temple and here in Jerusalem where you first met Jesus. This is where it all began for me. This is where I first met Jesus. He was about your age. Safta says he was very wise. Father's told me much about him. Yes, even as a young boy, he had a knowledge of Yahweh like I had never seen. It's what drew me to him. Saba, did he really turn water into wine at Aunt <laughs> Hannah's wedding? Yes, he did. It was his first miracle. You see, Jesus was always engaging and ministering and teaching the people everywhere my that he went. My deliverer is coming, my deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming, my deliverer is standing by.
I want to know what made you so sure you'd go meet with him, Saba. Father told me you risked everything just to go meet with Jesus. It was a difficult time. Caiaphas was the high priest, and he was under tremendous pressure from the crowds who adored Jesus. It was nearing Passover, and we had no idea what would happen next. Did you know he was the Messiah? I wasn't so sure. I had seen so many things that I thought he was. But the priests were constantly arguing, and Caiaphas forbid us to speak to him. But you went anyway? Why, Sabah? I had to know for myself. You may come out of the shadows, Nicodemus. I'm alone. How do you know my name, Rabbi? I know who comes and goes from the temple. I know what happens in my father's house. Rabbi, we, we know that you're a teacher come from God. No one can do these signs that you do unless, well, unless God is with him. But you have questions? I have studied the prophecies and the teachings all my life. I was taught as the youngest of boys that the Messiah would be a king and a conqueror who would bring deliverance to the children of Israel. Yet, you are none of those things, and somehow all of those things. I cannot ignore the signs and the miracles that align with the teachings of the Word. I wish to know the truth. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again, Nicodemus. I understand the notion of spiritual rebirth, but I do not understand how the spiritual rebirth that you speak of is part of, part of God's promise of redemption for his people. I am a willing student, Rabbi. Please teach me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. He who believes is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Are you saying that you are the Son of God? Are you the Messiah? The light has come into the world. Trust what you see before you. Trust what you feel in your heart, Nicodemus. Trust what Jehovah has said to you. It's another busy week, Nicodemus. Is everything ready at the temple for the festival of the Passover? As ready as it can be. It's a lot different today than it was 15 years ago. Well, <laughs> Caiaphas is gone, thankfully. But it's still tense. As it always will be. There are those who believe in Jesus and there are those who do not it will always be tense but why why don't they believe Jesus is our Messiah you and father have told me the Torah and the scrolls how could anyone deny him we all wonder that Rebecca but not everyone believes despite the evidence right in front of them <clears throat> it's just as Jesus told it's not simply knowing about him, but it's knowing in your heart that he is the Son of God. It's what makes Passover so much meaningful for those of us who do. I remember when Jesus and his disciples entered into the city. The crowds were praising God's name louder than I had ever heard. And the Pharisees told Jesus to shut us up. And you know what he said? What, Sabah? He said, I tell you the truth. 
If they remain quiet, the stones will cry out. He has come to bring light to me in the darkness. He has come to bring freedom to the captives. He has come to restore the broken heart. It's time. please. What happened after Jesus and his followers came to the city? It was the festival of the Passover. Where did Jesus and his followers go for the observance? Now, now, dear Rebecca, come and sit, and I will tell you all about it. After all the excitement of the day, Jesus and his disciples gathered in an upper room not too far from here. Even with all the tension and the commotion in Jerusalem, there was no way Jesus was going to miss the, the Passover feast. Jesus and his disciples went to a secluded place.
my body. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine again until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Judas, what you're about to do, do quickly. Is that the place, Sabah? Is that where it happened? Mm. Much of it. I was there when they questioned him. The people were calling him the Son of God. Caiaphas was enraged, and he feared the priests were losing their power to Jesus. Did Jesus claim he was the Son of God? Mm. Not in those words. Though he could not have denied it, he was the Son of God. Couldn't you stop it, Sabah? You were a priest. I tried. I went to speak on his behalf. I wish I would have done more. I should have done more had I only known. What's this I hear? Are you really plotting to have Pilate's guards arrest Jesus? What has he even done? What hasn't he done, Nicodemus? Your defense of this man has become an abomination. He's a blasphemer, a heretic. He claims he is the son of God. He must be stopped. Does our law judge a man without first hearing and learning what he does? Nicodemus, are you from Galilee too? Search and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. This is wrong, and you know it's wrong. We do what we must, Nicodemus. Be careful. Your warnings may get you into trouble with Caiaphas. He does not want to hear dissent. But the people follow him. And Caiaphas risks losing their obedience if he arrests Jesus. <laughs> Do they? You sure? 
I am sure. <laughs> well, let me introduce you to Judas Iscariot, one of his closest disciples. Suddenly, the disciples were awakened. The garden was filled with shouting, angry men. There were torches, swords, temple police, and Roman guards. And then Peter stepped forward, and he said, Whom do you seek? And Judas replied, Hell, Rabbi. And then Jesus said, Friend, do you betray me with a kiss? And then the guards grabbed him and hauled him away into the night. What did you do after they arrested him? I, I went to Pilate's house where they took him. I, I hoped I would get to see him or, or speak to him. I, I thought that maybe he would do something to save himself. A miracle, perhaps. But he didn't? It was not Yahweh's plan, Rebecca. Jesus knew what had to be done. And to be honest, I'm glad I did not know how it would all unfold. I don't know that I could have stood by and watched it, what was about to happen. <laughs> I find no fault in him. Is this the king of the Jews? <laughs> we have no king but Caesar! Yeah. We have no king but Caesar! We have no king but Caesar! We have no king but Caesar! But what has this man done? He's a rebel! A liar! He claims to be a king! As is your custom, I will release to you one prisoner. Barabbas! 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 What shall I do then with your king? Crucify him! 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 Crucify I am innocent of this man's blood. He is your responsibility. What has he done? What has this man done? Away with him! Let him be crucified!
Scarlet, so all the world could see that he was king. He could have ridden on a white horse as a warrior and conquered every land. Oh, yes, but he knew that it. Redemption's price were paid. It would take a land. It took a land. It took a Sacrifices every day, and though the blood appeased the Father, still the curse of sin was never wiped away until one day.
the Messiah! Save yourself and us! <laughs> Have you no fear of God? <laughs> Are you not subject to the same condemnation? <laughs> For indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sins we received is befitting of our crimes. But this man, he has done nothing criminal. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. <sighs> 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 Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It is finished. Percival was so distressed when he returned home. I had never seen him like this before. I knew that he was the Son of God. 
I knew it. But I did not understand. He endured so much suffering and pain. He was tortured, nailed to a cross between two thieves. How could God have let this happen? I was so confused and, and so hurt. Faith, my child, is, is hardest when what we see does not match what we know. Father says you went with a friend to get the body. Yes. A good friend, Joseph of Arimathea. He, he had a tomb, and he wanted me to help him prepare Jesus' body for burial. It was nearing the Sabbath, and we wanted to prepare the body as the law required, to put him, lay him in the tomb, and then come back after the Sabbath for a proper burial. Pilate agreed to let you have his body? He was worried. The crowds would have had trouble accessing Jesus' body. But he was quite relieved. He didn't have the responsibility of disposing of it. Then, Rebecca, the most amazing thing happened. Your Sabah, he came rushing in, bursting with news. Judith, you will not believe what has happened. Oh, Nicodemus, I've been praying ever since you and I came to Joseph and Rachel's last night, and you and Joseph left to gather Jesus' body. Please tell me his tomb was undisturbed. I've been so worried someone would violate it. No, no, that isn't it. He is gone. The tomb is unsealed, and he is gone. Gone? Nicodemus, you don't think someone stole his body? How awful. The tomb was sealed. There was a guard in front. I cannot see how anyone could have taken the body. Pilate gave explicit orders that the tomb be guarded throughout the Sabbath hours. The morning, we went to finish anointing the body. The stone had been rolled away, and the burial cloth Joseph provided was neatly folded and lying on the stone. But how? How can this be? I do not know, but I am sure. I am sure that God is still moving in this situation. Jesus is the Messiah, as dark as it seems. He told me that night I met with him that the light of the world had come. He is the light, Judith. I know it in my heart. But where are you going now, Nicodemus? Don't worry, Judith. You go on home and try to get some rest. I'm going to see Peter, James, and John and see what they know. Mary went to tell them when she left the tomb, we must find out where he went. I must know the answer. At the tomb that day, 
just shuffling soldiers' feet as they guard at the grave. One day, two days, three days had passed. Could it be that Jesus had breathed his last? Could it be that his father had forsaken him, turned his back on his son, despising our sin? All hell seemed to whisper, just forget him, he's dead. Then the father looked down to his son and said, I wish I could have seen it. 
as do I. I could hardly believe all your Sabah had told me, but it helped me. It helped me believe Jesus was the Son of God, our Messiah. How long did he remain here after he resurrected? He stayed 40 days with us before he ascended into heaven from the Mount of Olives. It was the most spectacular and glorious thing I have ever seen. Oh, 
always be holy forever. Would you help me just take a moment to thank these that have led us in worship tonight? Thank you. Thank you. We are so grateful that you've come tonight to experience this moment of worship together. My name is Rob Futrell. I'm the interim pastor here at Fairview. And on behalf of the Fairview family, I just want to thank you that you gave time tonight. It may be your first time to be here and to experience living pictures. It was my first time to uh, experience that. Or it may be a place that you come all the time. But we're so grateful that you've come tonight. The best thing about the story we've seen tonight is that it's true. It's real. And it's a story that's not finished yet. It's a story that you've seen literally come alive before you tonight, but you can read it in the pages of the Bible. And you can read it and reread it and see over and over again. And Nicodemus, who we walk with tonight, he was the one that in John chapter 3, when he met Jesus and we heard it so beautifully, literally from the lips of uh, Jesus tonight, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever, that covers you, that covers me, whoever would believe in him will have everlasting life. And we pray tonight that it's not just a story that you would see, but it's a Savior that you would believe in. Jesus, we've seen tonight, is able to do anything and he's able to do all things. We literally saw miracle after miracle tonight, recorded in the, 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 the uh, pages of Scripture, but by so many who saw it and experienced it, Jesus is able to do anything. But it's not just what he did then. It's what he can do now. He, he's not just able... He's available to you and to me tonight. He's not just the one who ascended, but he is the one who can be present with us. And we pray tonight that if you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, that tonight might be the night that you would place your faith in him. The Bible says that when Jesus died on the cross that he took all the sin of the world upon himself and anyone who would place their trust in him recognize their sin admit it that would believe that Jesus is the son of God and died on the cross to be our savior and would confess with their own mouth that Jesus is Lord believing in your heart but confessing that Jesus is Lord that you will be saved and tonight, if you've never trusted Jesus, we pray that this might be a night that you do. At the end of the, the time, and it's not quite over yet, we have another a, a opportunity to worship together. But uh, at the end of the time tonight, you'll see several of us pastors that are going to be here at the front and, uh, and even, I think, uh, around the room. But it would be our privilege if you would like to talk about how to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. It would be our privilege to talk with you. Just let us know. I'd like to talk, and we will um, definitely love to talk with you about how to receive Jesus as your Savior. If you know Jesus, I pray tonight you've been drawn closer to him and that you'll walk in greater intimacy with him. I pray that you'll love him more. What we've seen are reenactments, but it's what he did for you and he did for me. And the Bible says that, that because when we, when we do believe in him, that, that we won't perish, but we'll have everlasting life. And that begins here. That, that begins with a fullness of life that Jesus brings to you and to me. And we pray that this Easter season, this Passion Week, that you would experience the Lord in greater intimacy than ever before, that you would hear his voice, that you would walk with him, that you would trust him. 
And we also pray that you would gather again for worship this coming Sunday. That, that you'd worship maybe here at Fairview if you don't have a church home it would be our privilege to have you join with us in worship Sunday or, or your church home where you might be or that place that a friend has invited you to wherever it is where they're preaching the word of God and they're sharing the good news of Jesus death, burial, and resurrection we pray that you would worship him with all your heart we're so glad you came tonight Jesus is able and Jesus is available if you'll call on his name and one day one day just as Jesus ascended to heaven he said one day he would return and he would, he would receive all of those who have placed their faith in him and he would take them to a place called you know the word right heaven in heaven it, it's a reality right now, but one day we'll be in the presence of the Lord. And until that day, let's trust Him. Let me pray for us. Then we're going to have a last moment of worship together. But if you uh, tonight would like to, to, to pray to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I'm going to lead in a moment of prayer. And in your own heart, you can pray these words to the Father, and we'd love to talk with you further about what it means to follow Jesus. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence in this place tonight. You have been lifted up, and your word says that when you are lifted up, you draw people to yourself. Lord, across this room, I thank you that you know every person present. You know every need that exists. You know every name. And Lord, I pray tonight, especially for those who have never trusted you as Savior and Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that they would hear you whispering their name, that they would hear clearly what they've seen tonight they would hear clearly from you maybe even through my voice that you love them you gave your life for them and you invite them to trust you as their savior and lord and lord across this room maybe some would pray lord jesus i need you I know that I've sinned. I've fallen short of your standards and your glory. But I've been overwhelmed tonight to know that you died not only for the sins of the world, but you died for my sin. And Jesus, would you forgive me? Jesus, would you take over my life? I believe that you are Lord and and I pray that you would be the leader of my life from this day forward. Thank you for hearing my prayer, Jesus. And Jesus, it is in your name that we pray all of these things. Amen. One day, heaven awaits. I was so overwhelmed and grateful and overjoyed I had seen the salvation that Yahweh sent I walked with Jesus talked with him he was like a man like no other I believe you Sabah yes well it's time to go and meet your mother but there is so much more to teach you I mm, I hope that one day that you will come to know him just as I have. But how can I? He is no longer here. Oh, oh, dear child, it's just as Jesus taught. You will know in your heart that he is the Messiah. You see, Jesus came to, to teach us 
and to save us. His words still reach us today. So when you believe in your heart that he is the Son of God, you can be born again just as I am. Salvation can be yours. You no longer have to live under the law, but live in the light of Jesus' love. Oh, there's your mother. It's good to see you, Naomi. Uh, your mother and I have been telling Rebecca about all the incredible stories about Jesus. But there's so much more to tell, so uh, let's walk so I can continue and finish the story.
God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is good. Thank you so much. And be seated for just a moment. Jesus, would you like to have a seat? You've had a rough day, man. <laughs> but a glorious day. Wow, I'm so glad you were here tonight. Are you glad that you came tonight? Amen. I've been doing this for about 45 years now, and I've got to tell you that this family of worshipers is like none other. From the littlest child up there to the well-seasoned saints that are up there, it's just an amazing family to be a part of, and it's an honor to serve with them. I tell you what, if we started naming names... We couldn't do it. There's just over 300 people involved in this, and some of them you haven't even seen because they're wearing black and they're behind a class door. I mean, it's just, it's amazing how God brings all these people together. We are all different parts of the body, but we all have one goal in mind, and that's to lift up and glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, guys? Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We have seen so many people come through the doors of Fairview this weekend, and we don't want you just to take the news that you heard tonight, the experience that you shared together this evening with us, and just sit on it and put it in your pocket and say, oh, that was a, a nice story. But like Brother Rob said earlier, you need to take what you experienced tonight and share it. You need to share this good news with somebody. Share it with your family. Share it with your friends, your coworkers, your neighbor. Don't let it just be your information, your story. Share that story with others so that they too can come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Well, it's been a great day today, but next week is Easter Sunday. Next week is Easter Sunday. It's our Super Bowl Sunday, as we like to say here at Fairview. It's a great day, and we hope that you'll join us here or join somewhere where they're teaching the Word and celebrating the resurrected Lord. Would you stand with me? Let me pray for us, and we're going to slip on out. Lord God, thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity to spend some time with you this evening. Father, we pray that you would be the centerpiece of our worship tonight, and indeed you have. And Lord, we just want to tell you that we love you. Thank you for looking down through the course of time and seeing that we were going to need a Savior, and you chose an amazing way to send that Savior to us. And God, we just say thank you. We can never repay you. But, Lord, help us to live out our lives in gratitude and love and appreciation for what you did for us on that rugged old cross at Calvary. Lord, remind us that our hope, our future is not found in Capitol Hill. It's only found in Calvary's Hill and the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Father, for that security, that hope that we have as believers in Christ, that one day, one day, we will see you face to face. We will worship you forever and ever. But until that time, Lord, help us to live out our lives here that others might see you in what we say and what we do. We love you, Lord. Send us home. Bring us safely. Lord, bring us back into your house next week. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you and good night. <laughs>